now begin our worship service. Uh, let us all stand as, as we sing, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, number 542. <clears throat> This is the third Sunday of Advent, December 11th. <clears throat> this morning we're discussing the Lord's Highway. Our Bible readings are Isaiah 35, 1 through 10, and Psalm 14, 6 through 5, Psalm 146, 5 through 10. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. <clears throat> the desert shall rejoice and blossom like the crocus. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. A highway shall be there, and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it. But it shall be for God's people. 
No traveler, not even fools, shall go astray. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Prophet Isaiah tells us about the joy of ascending to God's house. The prophet tells us to imagine being set free, being unburdened, being released to live, to live fully in the grace and wonder of life itself, surrounded by those who love us like no one else. And then he tells us that the journey to get there is just as much a joy. <coughs> The psalmist says, Happy are these who help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord, who made heaven and earth, who keeps faith, who executes justice, gives food, sets prisoners free, opens eyes, lifts up, watches over, upholds. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. Thank you. We light these candles, the candles of joyous hope, of proclaimed peace, and of deep everlasting joy, as a sign that we are who we walk and skip in our step, because we can see the destination, and it is pure joy. We are ascending God's promise. Mm -hmm. Let us pray. <clears throat> o Lord, our Redeemer, you lead us from languishing in sorrow's shadows into laughter's joy over your abundant, <clears throat> over your abundant restoration. God of promise, God of hope, God of peace and God of joy, into our darkness come. Amen. <laughs>
members and active users. We thank you for his example and teaching. We thank you for his greatest act of love for you, giving his life to defeat sin and death for us. We are grateful that you have given us these symbols, the bread and cup, to help us remember. Now as we take, eat, and drink, fill us again with your spirit that we can tell the world what we have seen and heard. In the name of Jesus, our risen Lord, amen. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Brothers and sisters, for as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. This is not my table. This is not the church's table. This is God's table. And all, all are invited to partake. Let us feast. And don't worry, I know this day is all about our youth, so I'm going to be very mindful about the time. The youth's depiction of the, nativity of the nativity story begins in Luke 2, so I would like to go back a little to Luke 1, 39 through 45. This is after the angel Gabriel has wrote the news to Mary and Joseph about what God has planned for them and before they start their journey to Bethlehem. So this is Luke 1, verse 39. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea. When she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth, when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And in a loud voice she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. The word of God for the people of God and the church says, they speak to God. God. Yeah, you got to be loud because our kids are busy right now, okay? This is a beautiful moment between two women who have both experienced having their worlds turned upside down with the news that they would be giving birth. But they are in very different situations. Elizabeth, we can assume, had given up hope of having children long ago and had probably experienced menopause because of Zechariah's astonishment and disbelief when he heard Gabriel tell him that he and Elizabeth would be parents. Mary was very young, probably 17, but yet was willing to trust God despite all the pitfalls that would go with this incredible challenge. Now you would think that when Elizabeth saw Mary coming up the path to her house, that she would immediately take charge as a motherly figure to this youngling of a girl who probably didn't know the first thing about anything because she was so immature. But that is not what happened. Of course that is not what happened because remember, this is God. As soon as she heard Mary's voice, Elizabeth gave praise and adoration to this young woman because she knew, and the baby that she was carrying knew, that Mary was carrying the future. And it was new, and it was exciting, and it was good. Church, as our future shares the good news with us through the reading of scripture, storytelling and music let us be filled with joy and adoration and be amazed as their spirit kicks us into gear let us never be the one the ones who hold them back because we're fearful of change or because we just don't understand their lingo and this thing called tick tock well, i don't know let me tell you these young people are capable, they're full of imagination, and they are eager to take part in the work 
of spreading the good news of God's love to a hurting world, just like Mary. Mary wasn't wishy-washy about what was happening. She knew what was up, even if it didn't make sense at the time. And she was willing to tell anyone who was, who was within the sound of her voice. Let's hear what Mary was saying. This is verse 46. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever just as he promised our ancestors. Oh, yes, Mary, she knew. In church, I'm telling you, that's our youth. They have no filter that makes them second guess every move that they make or every word they say. And that's a good thing in the kingdom of God. We went caroling last year up and down our street and handed out flyers to invite people to our concert. They started knocking on doors without a hint of shyness which encourages us adults to get out of our comfort zone a little bit. And you know what? We survived. So as we watch our young people tell the story of our Savior's birth, let us be encouraged, let us be emboldened, let us be elated, and above all, let us be blessed. Amen. Christmas fills our hearts with joy as we think of gifts, lights, and holiday spirit. But remember, Christmas means something more. It's the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us travel back to Bethlehem to share the story of his birth.
Please, do you have any room for us in the inn? Do you have any room for us in your inn? We have come a long way in my letters with you. All of our letters are full, and we ha I have a perfect table on my feet where you and your inn are at lunch. But my inn was given this old shelf door. Yes, it's an age old shelf door. Please don't be scared. Child. And all 
they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen. As it was told unto them, Behold, there came wise men from the east of Jerusalem. Jews, for we have came, to, we have seen his star in the east, and we have come to worship him. When they saw the star, they rejoiced in exceeding great joy. to him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. When we give, get, give and receive gifts, stop and ponder what gifts you can give to the Christ child. For all the spirit, Christmas is the spirit of love and of generosity and of goodness. It illuminates the picture window of the soul. And we look out upon the, wind, the world world's busy life and become more interested in people than in things. The spirit of Christmas is something I hope all of us would have within our hearts and within our lives. Not only at this particular season, but also throughout the year. A wise Christian once said, let us not spend Christmas but let us keep Christmas in our hearts and in our lives. Mary. 